for power. You do not have an idea what it takes to be a genius, to be able to be a visionary, a titan of industry. And of course, when we say that, boom, 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 the name is, da -da 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 -da, say it down. Okay. Wow, Don Dixon, that was such Don a Dixon is that Sister intro. with superpower, amazing, dynamic. This is Rolling Out, CEO to CEO, Lunch and Learn. Hey Don, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, and thank you for that amazing, exciting intro. I need you to be my hype man when I go to my game. All day, call me. I'm right here, Munson Steve, <laughs> CEO. It's what we CEOs do. You know, if you can't lift up, then you know why are you in the room? Absolutely, you know, it, that's it facts. Those, those are facts. So for me, when we do lunch and learn, we just want you to impart your wisdom, your insight, your experience. So those who may not or haven't had an opportunity to get in the room with you, can be able to look, play it back, and know that your love for the community, you are a sister with superpower, you're a CEO, and we want them to know. So just for those who don't know, give them the one minute elevator pitch on PopCom. Awesome, thanks. Um, well, I'm Don Dixon. I'm a serial entrepreneur, I've been an entrepreneur 20 years. Started in tech in 2001. I started this company, Popcom, in 2017, and we're an automated retail technology company. Essentially, we build software that makes vending machines and kiosks smarter. Got that, y'all? Enterprise software, enterprise software, something you can license, and it is scalable. Something yes. that is scalable, something that brings innovation to a industry that is in need of a lift. Find that lane. Tell us about that lane, how that came, and how important for those who don't know and haven't met a super sister like you in tech, dominating and visionary, how you came up with this idea. Thanks. Um, so my background is in tech and then also retail. I started a company called Flat Out of Heels in 2011, so it'll be almost 10 years coming up now. And my idea was to sell rollable ballet flats in vending machines for women when their feet hurt in heels. So nightclubs, airports, conference centers, anywhere where women need relief. And I, as an operator and as a retailer, was looking for a new way to distribute my products direct to customer in a fast and efficient way. So I felt that vending would be really efficient because it's right there when you need it the most. But I had a challenge finding vending machines and finding technology that really allowed me to grow my business. As an e-commerce retailer, I was used to so much data from Google Analytics, from my Shopify store, and from the other tools that are available for e-commerce. But when I went to sell my shoes and vending machines, none of these tools existed. So I was really blind to who my customers were. I could not get their email addresses. I could not remarket them, retarget them. There was no way to engage with them after the sale. And there was no way for me to understand and quantify my traffic in my uh, potential business. I had no idea what was going on outside of that vending machine. And so when I went out to look for a software solution that I could use, it didn't exist. And so with, you know, as I said, me having a tech background, I saw an opportunity to really disrupt an industry that has very antiquated. I mean, vending machines have been essentially the same for a hundred years. And so now, you know, we really need to bring vending machines into the same omni-channel retail experience that we have in brick and mortar and in e-commerce. So that's how I got the idea and, and move forward. Wow, bam, you got it. And all of a sudden the idea of light bulb goes off. Light bulb, and definitely. Now we come right in and boom, the work begins. You've got an idea, you see the marketplace, you have to build a team and you've got to finance. What is the next three steps for that individual who now has an idea? What to do? What to do? The answer from Don Dix. <laughs> I love this. Okay. For me, the next step is always market research. You know, deeply understanding the market, the industry, deeply understanding the competitive analysis, what companies are out there that are doing anything remotely close to you or potentially exactly what you're trying to do. So I did a deep dive and I spent a long time doing that. 
Also along with customer discovery. So I, I interviewed uh, potential customers, so retailers and vending manufacturers to really get an understanding of if I built this, would they buy it? Get an understanding of what is the price point that's comfortable. And then I had to really dig into the financials to understand what is it, what was it going to take for me to build this business? A lot of times entrepreneurs just throw out, throw out numbers like, I need $100,000 or give me half a million dollars or, you know, I want a million dollars. But they have no idea what that money's going to be for, uh, how long of a runway that money gets them, what they're burning every month, what their margins are going to be what they need to make that work. So how many team members do you need, you know, licenses? Do you need office space, you warehouse space? What do you need logistics? So really get to do a deep dive financially. That is the first step before you do anything else. And then figure out, okay, what does this product look like? What does it look and feel like? If it's something that needs to be manufactured, just get a, a, a prototype, a mock-up, a rendering done. If you don't have the money to get a physical prototype made, a rendering is good enough to communicate your idea and your vision to potential investors and partners. If you want to do an app or something that's technical, get a wireframe done. So what is that, what is that app going to look like? How is it going to function? So I always then go to work figuring out what does the product look like? What's it going to take to produce this product? After all of that, I package it up you know, into a deck, three-year financial projections, um, really doing a deep competitive analysis, the problem I'm solving, um, you know, obviously the solution in depth. And then I'll take that to whether it's, you know, potential customers for letters of intent, potential uh, investors to raise capital, and obviously to people that I would like to join my team to help me build this out. There's a lot of steps in three minutes and we love it. So let's start with the whole idea of resources and research. Why was it important to really research and why does it mitigate many of the mistakes that we entrepreneurs of color make by spending before we've even researched the idea? I think we make a lot of assumptions that because we've never seen it, it doesn't exist or because we've never come across it, someone else is not building it or doing it already somewhere else. And I think it's always good to research, to understand the industry, what you're getting into, um, the barriers to entry, what could potentially keep you from scaling and growing, or what are some of the challenges? And if someone's never done it, why haven't they done it? Why do you think they haven't been successful? Or if somebody did it and failed, why did they fail? Really understanding what you're, what you're up against. But I think also, if you can find someone doing what you're doing, that's excellent because it's market validation. And you can take what they've done and make it better. So if you're going to be a CEO, like starting a business, you're actually a CEO. That means something. And as a CEO of any business, you need to be a subject matter expert in that industry. So that requires in-depth study where you really, really know it inside and out. So inside and out included interviews, industry interviews. What did you call that area? called it customer discovery and um, market research. So I would literally go to trade shows and events for the vending and automated retail industry and just talk to people that were potential customers or partners or just get direct feedback from people that work in the industry of have they seen anything like what I'm trying to do? Do they think it's a good idea? Would they buy it? Who do they think will be my customer? What's a fair price point? Will they pay? And just like, Really just, I surveyed 100 people, my team and I. 100. Why didn't you stop at five? I think 100's a good data set um, to make a good informed decision from. Five is not a large enough data set when you're talking about investing millions of dollars into something. You know, you say these words like they are part of a conversation that you've had a million times data set. Maybe we should give the audience a little idea on the role and the power of data and a CEO. Can you share with us? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, as we know, it appears today that data is the new gold. I mean, every major company that we interact with 
they're essentially a data company. Facebook's a data company. Google's a data company. Everything, they're understanding consumer data, want as much information as possible on what you do, how you do it, why you do it. The same thing applies to any business that you're in. You want to know your customers, your industry as deeply as Facebook wants to know us. You want to know everything that they're doing, their needs, their wants, their challenges, so that you can make it better for them. You can provide that solution. And so understanding your data, especially financial data, industry data, growth data and trajectory and historical data. Like I said, if things didn't work out, why didn't they work out? Um, that'll give you a lot of insight on how to make decisions. And the great thing about data is that the research you do, you don't have to learn uh, trial and error because you can learn a lot from other people's trial and error, but you have to do that research. Well, and then data allows us to be able to contact, to redirect, to continue to quarry. Um, yeah. So how do you mine data? Because many people have no idea. They hear the word data, okay, I got it, it's gold, it's been mined, but somebody has to process it. How do you process that information? Because now you did some research, you had a data set. The next thing someone would want to know, and just because they don't have an idea, they don't even didn't start with a data set, but thank God now that you're here on CEO to CEO Lunch and Learn, they can. How do you use a data set once you have it? So you really, and that's a great question because it's like once you do this research, what do you do? And you really have to analyze it. I mean, for me, with a hundred responses, that wasn't a lot for us to put in an Excel spreadsheet and really just review it as a team and have, have a discussion around the responses that we got. Of course, it has to be in an organized way, but there's a lot of software that exists. So if you need to get like larger scale data um, and, and do larger scale surveying, there's a lot of software that exists. One of them being a company that I recently acquired called Wiser, W-Y-Z-E-R-R.com. And it's actually a survey tool, gamified surveys. And it allows you to collect consumer data and market research in a way that people are more comfortable taking it. It's not your standard survey where you're just doing a checkbox or clicking something. It's gamified and we're getting about an 80% response rate on these type of surveys. So I encourage business owners to start using Wiser instead of um, Google Forms or SurveyMonkey because it will get you at higher an engagement rate. And then it'll analyze all that data and give you charts and graphs to help you see visually what the output of the um, questions that you put in in a way that you can process it easier. So why don't you spell that out so people know where to go and at this moment share Wiser. W-Y-Z-E-R-R.com. So get Wiser. And that's, like I said, a new company that I recently acquired. The announcement was made this week. This is Thursday. This week. Congratulations. Thank but you. What she didn't say was once you have a sophisticated process by going into a funder, you can actually use your wiser data because they're going to want to know where you got your data. She's providing you with charts and graphs. You may not be able to make them, but the program there, the software provided this industry enterprise software that this phenomenal sister with superpower has provided and acquired. So now instead of SurveyMonkey, you've never met the CEO of SurveyMonkey. Here is the CEO who owns, the owner of, and all of a sudden now you're wiser because she's made you and us, the community, wiser. We should be prouder and now all spread the word about wiser and the fact that this is a wonderful dynamic woman who believes in providing the tools and the resources so that you could take the data set from the use of wiser and now go out and fund and demonstrate through your data set being organized with wiser so that you can showcase the fact that your test and learn has been validated by wiser so now based on this and don dixon's phenomenal vision to continue to provide insight and enterprise through her acquisition and her learning that we must all understand data and the utility that it will provide as it relates to entrepreneurs and marketers and anyone who wants to understand the value of data and engagement. 
That's phenomenal. Can you just come work on our team? Because you have it down. <laughs> That's on the team, right. we're, we're working together. Collaboration is what we That's all right. want to do. Collaboration Collaborate. is, uh, the other thing we must be able to do is listen and share the insight. So I only gleaned and wanted to repeat and maybe synthesize for those who couldn't understand why you would use it. Uh, the fact that we want, once again, want to applaud and uplift. I think Taraji um, said, you know, don't make me your superwoman, right. literally. I, th I think the, you know, if a brother can't lift you up and you assist it, that's a problem. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a community problem. So yeah. if I can't uh, applaud you and lift you up and work with you, even though I'm not looking for a job, uh, at this moment, um, but I might be looking for an opportunity. See, you know, I don't turn down a whole lot of opportunities. I turn down a whole lot of jobs. Uh, uh, I had a young man spending some money uh, yesterday. I told him I'm not looking for a job. You know, I'm looking for an opportunity. Opportunities right. smell much better than jobs. See, I've had enough jobs in my lifetime. I think I've had 200 lives. Uh, uh, just as one black person, and, uh, and, uh, you know, so I've had that, but really proud, but I wanted people to understand how important Wiser is and yes. data is because most companies, even to do a marketing program, they want to say, well, how do you validate this idea today? And did you start with a val valid data set? And what tool, what third party tool did you use? So the value that I love about Wiser uh, is that not only has Don Dixon provided the community with a methodology by which to move and have third party data collected, which is what people want. The reason they love Facebook and say, have a marketing program there is because it's third party. Well, now you could use Wiser. It is third party. It's not yours. They are taking the information and actually collecting it, giving it, making it, scientific, something you couldn't do, because if it's just yours, then you didn't use third party. So now we have a sister with a, a black, powerful sister with a third party software providing you with an opportunity to do this. So I am proud of you, um, Don, and what you're talking about, because our community understanding data sets is so key because individuals are going to want. So Wiser makes sense. Great tool to add to your toolbox or CEO to CEO. This is dynamic. Thank you. And we have a free package. So you can do it for free. You can get a free account. And you can do, I believe, up to 100, serve 100 respondents for free. And then there's like $25 accounts. So it's very affordable. We really want to make, um, give all businesses access to quality uh, market research tools. So... For those of you who want to be in the movement, those of you who are watching and saying you're proud to be black, we have to invest in our communities. Using Wiser and spending $25 and using it yeah. for the benefit of your community, actually training your staff once you pay to use it is what we all need to do. It validates your truth as business people, by being able to survey on a regular basis and collect data. This is being provided to you by Don. So that's great, Don. So on our journey, you, you did the interviews, you took the data sets, and along that journey, what were the insights you learned about being able to utilize and input your particular enterprise software uh, into vending machines? I mean, the main thing that I learned was that there was nothing that existed that was similar, which was great. But then also it meant it was a challenge because I had to be the first to market, which everyone knows being the first to market is the most difficult. It also um, helped me to understand what price point that my uh, potential customers are comfortable paying and what was realistic um, and, and the, the various uh, tools that they currently use to subsidize the lack of having what I offer. So I would say, you know, how are you currently managing your inventory? Or they would have to do it manually. Um, you know, I just learned about how they're doing things and then it helped me to better determine what I can do to solve their, their pain points. 
And then I also learn about some things that they didn't really want or need that I thought that they did in the beginning. So it helped me to really fine tune my value proposition and take out things that aren't really necessary and then add some things that I didn't think of. So you always, it's important to listen to your customer and don't just go off of what you think, but um, you know, build something for them. Put it in reverse. You actually went and listened to your customer. Yes. So you had front facing research, evaluation, and then you were able to review and reimagine even what you had begun to imagine the first time. Yes. Yes. So now you had an even improved prototype just by doing research without beginning. Without doing anything. Because if I would have built before talking to them, I would have built the wrong thing. So warning, warning, what should we warn future CEOs about what, why not to do what you just said? I mean, you know, the warning is don't build a product for people without asking them do they want it and what exactly they want. That's the warning. Or you could be wasting a lot of money and time. Which, you know, I often say, Don, that is the drunken entrepreneur. Yeah. You're drunk with your idea. You're drunk with your imagination. And yet you're not going to have a data point. You're not going to validate it yourself. Um, and you've been in this business um, managing, having vision as a CEO. So you think like a CEO. Some people need to know some, what are the three secrets about the tech world that individuals need to understand so that we can eliminate fear and inspire others to understand and then have the courage to know what and who they're going to encounter in the tech world. That's a good one. Three secrets. I think the first one is that tech is not this big scary thing i mean the tech industry it, there's room for everyone and every skill set in the industry i always talk about how tech companies are companies and all companies need functionality across all departments so a tech company needs a marketing person a tech company needs a pr they need accounting they need legal they need human resources they need everything not just people sitting behind the desk writing code so everyone has a fit you know they need graphic designers. I mean, every single function that exists in every other kind of business, tech needs it. So if you're interested in being in tech, just go be in tech, you know, apply your skill set. your skills are transferable, apply your skill set towards a tech company. Um, also, I want to share that there's lots of access. I mean, now more than ever, you can do if you want to learn, like, um, just entry level and mid level tech knowledge there are things like boot camps and programs in almost every city in america everywhere i mean i definitely know atlanta has it i definitely know where i live columbus ohio has it but boot camps where you don't need any prior experience education or knowledge and they um prepare you for a career in tech and it's something you could do on the side what you know outside of work you don't have to stop working it's an evening weekend accelerated learning and i actually hired one of my team members out of a boot camp he did not have a tech background, you know, he was in, in, consume, in, 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 um, in a community activism and he's an artist and he went into tech and I, I hired him after he went through the boot camp. So that's another thing. It's just, it's, I think tech intimidates people with the words and with when we see the white male image that is associated with tech. So I'm happy to see more people that look like me um, that are just, Every, you know, we're black people, everyday people, and we're in technology careers. So those are two. Um, and the third one, I don't know if it's a secret, but I will say now because of COVID, your access to the community and to the network is like very, very close and easy because all the conferences and events are now online. So before, where I used to have to travel the country, to network and build my um, tech community, build relationships, get to know people. Now you can just log in from your laptop at home and attend all the major events and conferences around the country. 
this is now the perfect time to start to really put your foot in the door and without ever leaving your house. So that's another one. But you know, she, she left out all the, the hot, new, big pinnacle that she has run up and down that most don't. It's a marathon. And it's called Resources and Financing Your Dream. When you're a CEO, the value of what you do, realizing that reality, that Don Dixon is a sister with superpower and the ability to raise capital in order to finance her vision and dreams. Don, share that because that to me makes all the difference in all of those who want something. But if you're not willing to go and finance what you're doing, that is a problem. Can you share how you have approached financing, number one, and then the importance of even now being able to crowdfund? So I want to start by saying my ability to raise capital and finance my business was a direct result of my ability to grow the business, develop the business at least, you know, lay the groundwork, everything that I just talked about prior, market research, doing your deck, doing your financial projections, building your team, building your network. These are all things that have happened before. Entrepreneurs say, I have an idea. I want to raise money. That is not the one, two step. <laughs> Raising money is the last step after everything that I just said, you know, is done. And so honestly, I've raised money and, and acquired capital for my company in every way possible that's out there right now. Of course, I bootstrap, which means I've, I've paid for things myself. I was, you know, you invest in yourself to get it going. I raise money from friends and family. I raise money from accredited angel investors. I raise money from venture capital. I raised money from winning pitch competitions, over $250,000 I won in pitch competitions. I raised money, thank you. I raised money from accelerator programs, and, uh, like Techstars. And um, last but not, oh, I, I raised money from business loans, uh, you know, personal, leveraging my personal assets for lines of credit. And last but not least, which was literally the last thing I did, not the first, the last of all of those, I raised money from the community, over 4,500 people um, in the community across 15 countries and 42 states in the United States through crowdfunding, through leveraging the JOBS Act, which allows entrepreneurs and businesses to raise money from both accredited and non-accredited investors. Briefly, accredited means you have a million dollars net worth, and or you are generating $200,000 a year in income as a single person, $300,000 as a married couple for two years, so you're accredited. Non-accredited is everybody else. So that's everyday people. And, and I believe that just because you may not be worth a million dollars yet or make $200,000 a year yet, does not mean that you're not capable, um, able, uh, qualified to invest with your own money. And that was a, since 1933, it's been a law that would not allow non-accredited people, so non-wealthy people, to get in on early stage investment deals. So it was, I believe, a major contributor to why our community, as, as a Black community, one of the many reasons, but another big one is we could not really grow our wealth through investments because we were not able to get into early stage deals to get those higher returns. And so now we can. And that was what led me to opening up my company to give my cap table, so to give my shares, uh, people opportunity to buy shares in my company. That was because it was a passion of mine and it, it, it ended up working out and I raised $2.3 million dollars last year and this year from the public. But it's also, I want to just say, it's not easy at all. It's not an easy thing to do, um, but it is becoming more accessible to us. And I believe that the work that I'm doing along with several other people will make it easier and pave the way for others. But you still have to have all of your due diligence, everything I said before, you have to have that ready.
That's my long pause. <laughs> <laughs> now, I always had a long pause, you know, let this, let it. I love it. And, and love the silence. I, my I son. But, you know, you, you have done well in, as a CEO and you obviously have vision. I, not certain people know, um, they hear, you know, you've done it, but raising $2 million through crowdfunding, 4,500 people, 15 countries, that is not easy, but it was your commitment to yourself. Yes. So give me three affirmations that you say to yourself each and every day that make you want to realize your dreams. You know, that's a good one. And I am a walking embodiment of an affirmation. But in the very beginning, when I was, when I was learning to shift my mindset around abundance and wealth and success and to be a magnet, I would say I am a magnet. You know, I am, there's nothing but abundance. There is no lack. And then I changed my vocabulary. I changed the words that I use and always use affirmative affirmative words so instead of saying um i'm trying or i'm working on it or i want or i need it's just always action words i will i have i have this i i will do i'm, I'm doing this you know the way you say things so say i need um i need a million dollars for my business i will get a million dollars for my business you know, everything, the, the words that you use, no words that, that indicate lack. So the word need is a word that indicates lack. But if you change your mindset to there is no lack, only abundance, and everything comes in abundance, and there's more than enough for me to have everything that I want, need, desire, whatever. So those are the things that I would just say to myself to change the words that I use. and. Um, it definitely, it's like a little mind hack, you know, it changes the way that you feel. You don't have that feeling inside of, you know, like that gut feeling that you get when it's just not, it's not going your way. You're not sure how you're going to do it or you don't know how you're going to get there. For me, I always just feel confident that I'm going to accomplish every goal and it's just abundance and wealth mindset. And I teach this too when I coach people about just changing the words and always having an abundance mindset. And that's really what it boils down to because it can be many discouraging moments in this journey as an entrepreneur, especially financially or when people don't believe in you and being able to program your mind to know that it's going to happen for you. You don't have to know how or when, but just know that it will. It's inevitable that you, you know, you command the universe and it must respond. And so that's just the way I approach things mentally. So it's not like an affirmation. It's really like a complete all day, 24 seven mindset that I have to embody. This is the long pause. I, I was doing a long pause again. Um, so I, I, I grabbed a couple of things from you that um, I'm just gonna say are part of CEO to CEO. And one, just so all of you understand, is programming your mind. It is your job to reprogram most things that you've been taught anywhere if there is a idea of lack, if it's in your conversation, if you doubt, the fact that you are supposed to be living your best life, if you're living a life where you're surrounded by people who believe in what you dream, live your dreams by reprogramming your mind. So programming your mind is a full-time job. Programming your mind to be able to live through the mindset that you are putting in the vision between you, the universe, God, whoever you want to call it. But at that moment, that's your battery. And that is what has to charge you each and every day. Did I get that right? Yep. You know. you know that because you're, you're successful and doing well. And I believe that's a common characteristic 
that I have observed that successful people have. You know, I believe there's a hack. I love that. So it's called the black mind hack. And you have to have the black mind hack at this moment, because we're obviously a black audience at this moment. And I am proud of being black, a black entrepreneur, a black individual who is on a CEO to CEO lunch and learn, hoping that there are more black CEOs that will grow from seeing and visioning Don and applauding and going to Wiser and being there and paying $25 and not being mad, but celebrating the purchase like you do when you go to every other store and don't know who the owner of the store is, don't know who made the product and spend your dollars. Hack your mind and look for someone in your community support. That is part of our movement. Exactly. And if you're not black and you believe in the movement, then use Wiser again and help our movement. Did I get that yeah. right? Yes. I think for me, that, that's really important, mind hacking. But mind hacking has to happen every day because the world shifts each and every day. Pandemic mindset, it's your day. Time to be in another way. What's your, <laughs> pandem what's your pandemic mindset? Because, you know, you've done some things differently, I'm certain. So for all those, you know, I wish it was, I'm like, I'm so, do not tell me. If you start talking to me about wish, I'm good. It's not changing. This is what it is. You are in a boxing ring. What's your pandemic mindset because we need individuals to know what the ceo mindset is in a pandemic yeah i mean from my knowledge and and understanding of business many billionaires are made during a recession it's a it's a prime time you know when the economy is experiencing a shift for you to capitalize on your market and capitalize on some of the downturn from your possible competitors or other businesses. And so for me, I took the time, you know, for, for the lockdown time or the quarantine or the pandemic time, which is still going, but to really, really double down on myself or my business, really lock into additional streams of income and um, really take that time to reevaluate and reexamine things that we're doing, like our supply chain, like how can we optimize our business as well? But for me personally, 2020 has been the best financial year I've ever had because during the pandemic, I, I got three new sources of income. And so I was looking for new ways. My husband did as well, you know, and so we're looking for new ways that we can capitalize on this new digital world that we're in. And, you know, starting my, launching my crowdfunding course, launching my, um, my consulting and, and uh, coaching on Super Peer through Product Hunt, uh, just ways to, to, to make more money and, and bring, bring money into my home. So in businesses, of course. So all of my businesses, I, I actually had the time to do a new campaign for Flat Out of Heels. And Flat Out is really experiencing a new resurgence of business. So all of my businesses are performing better than ever right now. You know, you have one question and people want to know is Popcom or Wiser on the stock market or is there ability for them to invest in either of those companies yet? Yeah, definitely. We're not on the stock market. We're a privately held company. And we, um, we're not publicly traded, but we do sell private equity to accredited and non-accredited investors. If you're interested, so Wiser and Popcom is one company. So if you invest in Popcom, you're automatically investing in Wiser because Wiser is Popcom. We own Wiser. So uh, you can go to popcom.shop forward slash invest. And then you just click on join the wait list and then you will receive information when our next round opens up. So we already have about $400,000 on the wait list for our upcoming round. And we're raising $5 million. And we've already raised 1.4 million of that. So about another $4 million. 3.6, depending on how you- Thank you for your excellent math. 
Well, you know, I'm, it's not, thank you for excellent math and saying that, but you know, I, it's simple math, I'm good. You know, it, it, the trillions, the, the zeros might get a little blurred, but I think I can do it. But you know, up to a billion in my head, I, I can do that too right now. You know, I, I can, you know, math fractions. I got the basic math, but you know, first year calculus, geometry made sense to me, you know, so that, that, that's cool, you know, but all of, to me, for a CEO, it's all about algebra, you know, it, it is really a, a methodology on algebra, you know, how do you make, you know, X plus Y equal a million, you know, that, that's the, 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 yep. the, for me, so my love is algebra, you know, it, it, everything else is, uh, a little more complicated, but now, you know, I'm into invisible numbers, but just algebra, because it seems to just be problems and in sets and how do you move sets and see the invisible and put it in math and then equal out to what we're working to. So that's just your brother's mindset and how I approach yeah. what we, we do. Um, but for all of those who are out there, you have some phenomenal peers. And sisters are killing it right now. I had to remind a brother the other day that sisters started Black Lives Matter. And there's some sisters that are in your circle that are doing it. Who are some of the sisters that you see and admire in the tech space that are really making a, some noise? Yes. So two of my faves, uh, Angela Benton, she was a, the first founder of New Me, which was the first um, accelerator for Black people and Black founders. It was acquired, and now she just did a crowdfunding campaign, but she's just a pioneer. Um, her company's called Streamlytics. Jasmine Crow, one of my great friends, her company, Gooder, is literally feeding people all of, around the country. I mean, if you're based in Atlanta, you're familiar with the work that she has done to just keep children and families fed in and around Atlanta. Uh, my friend, Savitra, uh, Wilson, she's based in New Orleans. She has an amazing company called Resilia. I, I definitely admire what she's been able to do. Tara Reed, she has a business called Apps Without Code. I just admire her so much for what she's been able to do and grow. There's a woman named Crystal Atien. Her company's called Ruby Love. This woman is doing 23 million in revenue last year, you know, selling products for women, for, for young teens. Uh, Candice Burkeen, she's a, a venture capitalist. She was an entrepreneur. She exited. She became a VC. They just, her and her husband, who's also a friend of mine, just closed the fund, and they're going to have $50 million to allocate. Arlen Hamilton, my friend and investor, uh, just the work that she's doing to just, you know, fund underrepresented founders. You know, I could go on and on, but those are the, my friends that came to mind right away. I mean, there's so much work being done. There's so many of us. I've been in tech since 2001. There was a time I couldn't name anybody. And so the fact that now there's so many of us, you can't even name us all, is amazing. Yeah, I, I just wanted to shout out a few of the people that I know are close to you because everybody admires what you're doing. And uh, also, the mastermind group. How do you build and why is your mastermind group so important? So it's interesting. I'm a part of many groups, peer groups, and we really didn't call it a mastermind group, but it's essentially what it is. And it, it's really peer networks that we formed um, together to share information, successes, challenges, um, be peer mentors to one another. I'm, I'm part of a group of women in tech, I think there's about 50 of us in this group right now. It's called Visible Figures. It was started by Stephanie Lampkin. She's the CEO of Blendor, which is another amazing business in tech. And Stephanie saw the movie Hidden Figures and said, you know what, we're not hit, hidden no more. All these women that are in tech currently today, black women, raising venture capital, you know, um, making all these these big moves, we need to make sure their stories are documented and we need to make sure we uplift one another and support one another so that we can rise together. So I'm in that group. I'm also a part of a, a group that actually is called a, a mastermind group, but it's, it's started by Spectacular Smith. Um, and he's phenomenal. I mean, obviously what he's been able to accomplish with his internet and online marketing businesses is unmatched. And he brought together leaders across several industries. We recently hosted a conference called Ground Zero Summit, 
where a lot of us, 30 of us, came together to just share information that we share with each other in our um, Telegram channel and on our monthly mastermind call every second Tuesday of the month. I'm a part of, as a result of me being in accelerator programs, I'm a part of several tech groups that are not, you know, these are diverse. So the, these first two are mainly just black. Then I'm a part of the tech stars group, which we get together once a month and CEOs share, you know, what's going on and we can be transparent and vulnerable and share good things and bad things. And it's just so important to have that. I'm a part of a stock traders group um, learning more, you know, staying up on the industry. So everything that I that I want and desire to be strong at, I have a group of peers, mentors, advisors, people that are like minded. I mean, I have a group, you know, very spirituality focused. I'm into energy healing. So I have a group like that. I have a group where cryptocurrency, I just got a good crypto tip yesterday. And so just it's important to align yourself with like minded people across everything that you're involved in. Super. Well, we're almost out of time. So you'll be able to get all of your time back for the rest of the day, but we are very inspired. And I want to thank you for taking the time to spend with us here at uh, rolling out CEO to CEO lunch and learn. Lastly, just vision. What is your vision? Can you share with the community your vision beyond where you are today? How do you share your vision for tomorrow? My vision is to be a catalyst for creating a generational wealth in my community and doing that by educating. So creating investors, cultivating investment in the community, also being an investor in companies as I do now, I'm an investor in startups, but generational wealth is something that I'm definitely pushing forward for us. Super. Rebuilding Black Wall Street, but everywhere. Not one street, but actually everywhere. I am all about Black Wealth Wall Street. So um, we got a program coming up just like that, that uh, we're doing with the, one of our partners. And you know, I have a, a tech conference. Obviously, I participated with uh, Steve Canal on the Ground Zero, and they both met at our uh, ride conference. So September 25th and 26th, we're going to come reach out to you because we want to make sure you participate. But uh, we're very, very proud of you. We want to make sure that people utilize wiser. So let's figure out how we leverage that together. So for all of you, if you don't do anything else today, follow Don Dixon. Make sure that you look at Popcom and Wiser. Get on her list for future investors if you are looking. So now you know how to get involved. And if nothing else, love her, support her, and know that this CEO is involved in our community and making a difference each and every day in our lives. But more than anything, she's making us proud. Sister with superpower, it is Don Dixon. We love you. We appreciate you. you And thanks so much for coming on, rolling out CEO to CEO, Lunch and Learn. See you soon, and see you next week, everybody. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.